My name's Cody Smith. I'm Tierra Penner. Hi there, I'm Tim O'Campo. And the three of us are the hosts of The Last Pod Bender. Welcome to The Last Podbender, episode 11. Uh, this episode, we are discussing Avatar The Last Airbender, book one, episode 11, which is called The Great Divide. Look at me go. Didn't fuck that Nailed one up. Nailed it. That was actually pretty good. First day. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> oh, was whoa. He? Okay. Looks like we're not even recording. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Accident. We got attacked, we got attacked again. <laughs> Wait, actually? No, 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 we're good. <laughs> we're good, we're good. Uh, um, so what was the episode about Yeah, so here? in this episode, uh, it starts off with Aang and Katara mad at each other about... Sokka. Sorry, yes. Katara and Sokka mad at each other about chores, and then they come to, like, the Great Canyon or the Great Divide or whatever, and um, they meet these two tribes who are... Suspiciously having similar problems to the ones that Katara and Sokka were having at the beginning <laughs> of the episode. Who knew? Who knew? Um, anyways, Avatar Aang is thrust into a situation where he has to negotiate peace between them. And he doesn't really know what to do because these bitches be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, they completely disregard everything that the quite knowledgeable guide has to say. And they get trapped in a canyon where they have to um, make it out the other side without an earthbender, mm. which Aang is not yet. No. Um, so, yeah. And then Aang figures out, figures out a solution, obviously. There's super creepy things that are, like, half spider, half wolves. Like, the true meaning of a wolf spider, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's the episode. Yeah. I guess at the end... Um, Aang just straight up lies to them, but it makes them get along, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's like when your parents like tell those quotation marks white lies to you to get you to stop doing something annoying. It's like, oh, if you keep crossing your eyes, your face is going to be stuck that way. But yeah. instead, uh, Aang was just like, I'm just going to gaslight a hundred years of history <laughs> <laughs> just to get these people to stop whining. That's yeah. what he said. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super, super moral. Yeah. And ethical. I guess we sh- it should be mentioned that each each tribe kind of has their like own reasons for why the other tribe is like terrible. <laughs> like they each have their own myths or legends, and they they're kind of sticking to it, and that's what has like caused this rift between them. I guess for me, mm. I've just read a lot of fantasy books lately, but Ooh. for me, it just does not seem like these reasons are good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Like, uh, these reasons do not seem strong enough to keep tribes fighting for a hundred years. I mean, years. just oh. honestly look at history and you'll find it like that's a common theme throughout history and why people hate each other (laughs) is because of slights that happened that nobody remembers like (laughs) look at the hundred years war there was a war that happened for a hundred years the people who started that war weren't the ones who even finished it so like why are they even Mm -hmm. fighting you know what i mean it's like stuff like that happens all the time i don't know anything about hundred year war i've like heard the name mentioned but i sincerely honestly know nothing else well it's between the english and the french and no i'm just kidding i'm not kidding into a history <laughs> lesson here i'm just saying that i feel like the reasons that they are giving uh why they're fighting are like completely valid re- they're not actual valid reasons but they're valid reasons for people to be fighting because there's examples of it in actual history what's so interesting is that like um like though this is there was a little bit of the sins of the father theme, but then like like these people would have like literally no connection to the people that like like they didn't know Wajin and Jinwei personally, and then it was so interesting seeing them uh, react so viscerally as if they did, and it was kind of it was and honestly that conflict was seemed like more of a scapegoat to initiate with conflict, like it's just like like oh this is our track like it feels like they're the each tribe's identity was built upon hating the other rather than really um, 
we didn't really see those tribes have really culture beyond that. Besides, like, oh, we dress this way and act super <laughs> oh, dainty. Oh, we're super clean. I eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the other okay. tribes like, oh, we don't care. Oh, we're super messy. <laughs> um, and I think, uh, I think throughout the fandom, this is like recognized as like the closest, like as a filler episode. Really, uh, we don't really get, we don't, we aren't re- introduced to the Zhangs and the. Oh my gosh, I forgot the other... <laughs> We're not reintroduced to these tribes ever again. Jin Wei? Ja, that's like no, the, that's that was the, the name, name of the people. Like but... Ja Ling? Yeah. Like, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. Wait, no, just, <laughs> yeah, just no, go I'm going, over it. I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> um, yeah, w- these characters aren't ever really referenced ever again. But w- it, they do end up in Ba Sing Se, which is super interesting. So it would be cool to see that continuity if we did run into them. But... uh. But yeah, I think, I'm just trying to think, what did the writers really accomplish with this episode, I it guess, narratively? Like they didn't accomplish anything because the lesson <laughs> that they imparted at the end was lie to make everything better. <laughs> so like, it really feels like they didn't accomplish anything. <laughs> I feel like probably because it is the first season and stuff and it's yeah. still kind of rocky and whatever, they yeah. were like... Oh, shit, we don't Rocky. have any. We, we don't have anything for this week. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do? Like we've kind of run out of the story so far. Uh, just classic TV trope: one group super messy, one group super clean, and they're they're at odds with each other. You know, <laughs> and the writers' rumor is like, oh hey, like I don't know what did you do this week? And like, yeah, I went to the Grand Canyon. We, all we did was fight with my family. That's an episode. <laughs> we got it. We got it. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, even even though it, it is a filler episode, I was mm-hmm. finding myself being like, okay, like, maybe they're trying to teach us about... Because that's what I do. Anytime we're oh. watching these episodes, I feel like there's some sort of lesson <laughs> hidden within it, right? Because every episode... Why? Every episode has to have a lesson in with it. But but I feel like maybe this this episode was, like, the dangers and how easily it is to get caught up in, like feuds that have been going on forever you know it's, it's easy to get kind of caught up in like the mythos of a culture and mm. like why does your group hate that group that other group oh because we just always have you know yeah. and or, kind of the dangers like, revolved around that yeah. expanding on that maybe even just like the peer pressure that goes around that oh my grandmother hated his grandfather and so now I hate them and because I do now I'm going to peer pressure all my friends to do that also and that's kind of what feels like happened Mm -hmm. and like because obviously they were from very similar tribes that lived very close together which means that they probably had family in both tribes at some point Mm. and then also expanding on the peer pressure just like Katara being like well, if everybody else is going to do it, I guess it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, good lesson to teach children. <laughs> yeah, we literally see peer pressure, like, take hold. <laughs> like, those are honestly the, like, those are honestly, like, the exact words of Katara. If everybody else is doing it, it's probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> what I found interesting about these, because we've seen, like, these characters uh, from their beginnings and, like, got have been able to witness uh, part of their growth with Sokka, Katara, and Aang. Um, I feel like every, like all the dialogue and just the people felt more like caricatures rather than actual characters. Is I felt like yeah in this episode yeah I felt yeah like that too. It didn't feel like they were themselves. Yeah, I think normally it, it, this episode doesn't had have uh, this episode doesn't have as much heart, and you, we don't really see as much heart in the in the characters. It felt like felt almost intentionally it tried to be more light and fun rather than like trying to get into the inner workings of how people actually think yeah. and i'm wondering if that's almost like a what you might call it like something what well, there's a word for it or it's like satire almost okay i'm not sure if it was like meant to draw comparisons to um how like people who like in real life if if this was meant to be a satire of people in conflict in real life of how um uh, how I guess how let me, let's try to get deep on this episode. <laughs> uh, how how um an identity built around hate isn't actually an identity. Yeah. I'm trying to get something out of this episode. <laughs> let's just say that was a lesson. <laughs> but the gaslighting, I'm still not okay with. Yeah, for real. Um, when you were talking about characters, one thing that popped in my head is just like Aang's expressions in this entire episode are just 
over the top and exaggerated to the point of like not being believable. Yeah. And like I get it's a cartoon and a lot of his expressions are exaggerated, but this ep- this episode just seemed like a little bit extra. I want someone to look at me the way Aang looks at uh egg custard tarts. Yeah, yeah. for real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. I I do like that. I feel like each episode so far has kind of like foreshadowing within the beginning, like the little Mm. silly camp situation that the like gang finds themselves in usually translate and translates into like what the rest of the episode is going to be. You know Mm -hmm, what I mean? mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you see that a a bunch with even just as an example of the last episode, the jet episode, it's like Sokka feels like he is not being respected as a leader, so we're gonna put that to the test. And then mm. in this episode, it's like Sokka and Katara are having conflict. Well, conflict is gonna be the whole theme of the episode. I guess. <laughs> yeah, like, and to be fair, Sokka and Katara's conflict felt more realistic than the tribe's conflict did <laughs> because they're ch- they're children, and I work with children, and it's very realistic for children to get get upset because another child did not do what this child expected them to do. (laughs) They're not only children, they're siblings, though, and that's just, like... Yeah, that just, like, adds an extra layer. Yeah, it's just classic, like, sibling behavior, I (laughs) feel. But for, like, the tribes to also act the same way that the children do seems unrealistic to me. It just didn't pack a punch. Yeah. Mm. I mean, actually, like... The we kind of see that like almost the tribe's conflict is actually just an extension of Sokka and Katara's conflict. Yeah, because the one tribe is messy and un- unorganized and eat meat, and Sokka obviously fits in perfectly with them. And then the other tribe is very clean and organized and prepared for things. And <laughs> Katara, and we see that they both like fit in perfectly with those tribes, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like the 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 tribe's cl- conflict was actually an extension of Sokka and Katara's. Let me get conspiratorial right now. (laughs) What was that reference the very, very beginning of this episode were the the Earth Spirits um, who are responsible for uh, for creating the Great Divide. So let's get a little crazy right now. What if what if the Earth Spirits were still there and notice the conflict uh, between Katara and Sokka and be like, oh, that's some bad juju up in here. Let me let me craft these illusions to teach these two <laughs> teenagers a life lesson. And then they just like exaggerated um, the conflict so much so that um, Kat- Katara and Sokka could see themselves in it. Wow. And I think that, that conflict was result like. Um, <laughs> I don't think uh, like, the conflict is- between the two tribes is really resolved because it it was out of deceit. But the conflict between Katara and Sokka um, resolved um, was resolved uh, when they both uh, escaped the canyon by uh, tr- uh, tricking the uh, wolf spiders together. Um, Katara said, "Like Sokka, I don't even care about uh, their dumb conflict anymore." Um, what else did she say? Yeah, something something like that. And Sokka was like, yeah, it's okay, I don't care about them either, they just gave me meat. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, that's my conspiracy. This episode's so much deeper than anyone thinks, guys. (laughs) If we're working off that conspiracy, then Aang's lying seems both more and less consequential. (laughs) Because, let's say, if a spirit did that, it'd have to be some sort of, like, trickster spirit or Mm. have something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And lying to a trickster spirit... I feel like it would respect Aang, but also want to get revenge. You know what I mean? I feel I feel like the creators were like, how the hell are we going to wrap this up? Like, we've, we've dug ourselves into such a hole, and we have a deadline. <laughs> he lies to them. <laughs> oh, wait, the names sound really, really similar. Let's make them be twins. Yeah. <laughs> At eight years old. There we go. There we go. It's all about a silly, a silly game that... Uh, it's called redemption. Redemption. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to, to be fair, like uh-huh. for Ang to like make up that story on the spot and just throw that out, like uh, respect. He like, is a smooth that's, criminal. That's a fucking story. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me kind of worried though. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, the red flag. No, <laughs> the whole fandom just never addresses that red flag. It's like, oh, Ang's such a wholesome bean. He's He's like, he just <laughs> can pull a lie right out of his butt three seconds flat. Something that's interesting in terms of continuity, uh, the episode we just came from, episode 10, uh, was Jet, and uh, one of the... <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, this kind of makes us worse, but the whole point of um, of the gang not liking Jet anymore is because he lied and used their abilities <laughs> to, to nearly wipe out a whole town. So Aang was like, you know what? I'm gonna... Okay, he did it wrong, but I'm gonna try it out. Like, what if I... 
<laughs> what if I lied to solve my problem? So I think he just wanted to try a little bit of that jet energy, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Just a wee bit, just to see what happens. Just and he never does it again. Maybe it's like, it was like experimental drugs, except make it lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, it is, like, I, I, I do agree that this is kind of like an odd episode, and that doesn't really kind of fit in with all the others. It is, just seems like filler. Mm-hmm. Um. One thing that I did see, uh, kind of notice while watching it, is it kind of addresses like that classic prisoner's dilemma problem. Like, you know, how, what are you gonna do? Like, you, do you guys know the prisoner's dilemma? No, no. It's no, kind of no. like, how are you gonna get ahead? Like, okay, so there's two groups, and neither of them know what the group, uh, other group is going. You can either decide to like oh help, harm basically help or harm to try and get ahead if both groups decide to help then both get ahead if one decides to help and one decides to harm then the one who harms gets ahead and if both decide to harm then neither get ahead Mm. that's the prisoner's dilemma essentially and basically the the way that they brought food into uh the canyon is yeah. basically the classic prisoner's right. dilemma because they both decided like, to harm right yeah, it's yeah. like so oh i think i think these guys are gonna bring food in because they're messy and gross so i'm gonna bring food in and these people are like they think we're gross so they think we're gonna bring food in so therefore we're gonna bring food in. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah that's a definite feedback loop of just like expecting like expecting to see the worst in someone and then seeing it and like because they wow. expect you to expect yeah. them to be <clears throat> the worst so then why not be that yeah exactly so it's like it's like your classic ethic problem i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah which uh, maybe maybe the creators didn't mean for that to be that <laughs> but it like definitely is that cody 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 everything is planned about the series yeah. everything is super it's the earth spirit <laughs> it's the earth spirit <laughs> tim's conspiracy corner the earth spirit <laughs> knew about the prisoner's dilemma. <laughs> it's the only explanation. But I, I do like how we do see even like Momo and Appa in conflict in this episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> they couldn't share. And then Momo was mad because he got a small piece. And Aang's like, yo, Appa has five stomachs, which is like <laughs> a cool thing to learn about Appa. He has five stomachs. Is it stomachs. six or five? I, I know thought it was, it was crazy. five. Whatever it is, it's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a lot more than Momo well, has, so. <laughs> yep. It was very cute. It was off of his little finger holding it down. Like, yeah. Momo trying his best to move it. Yeah. No. And, like, the little, it's the Momo music. <laughs> <laughs> so it is kind of interesting that, like, even just from the beginning, kind of Aang is thrust into that, like, uh... Uh, I guess conflict uh, resolution position. Yeah, mm. like I'm trying to think of the right word. We just watched uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation. And mediator Picard was that mediator. Mediator. He was a mediator of conflict. Mm. I love that you bring Star Trek into this. That's, that's because that's, like, my co- that's, that's my <laughs> comment yeah. for that. <laughs> we just it's because we just watched a certain episode where Picard was that exact same thing, but I couldn't think of the word. So it's like maybe by referencing it, you would get the word for me. But that's it was like awesome. basically, yeah, a mediator of conflict, and we see that like within his own group, his he is able to like make those calls and kind of mediate that conflict, but then it like scales up almost immediately. Mm-hmm. And he has troubles with it. And again, he just lies to finish it <laughs> off, which is like super great lesson. Yeah. <laughs> this, just... this episode just relies on peer pressure mm. and lying. Mm-hmm. This is not a good role model episode. <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't rely on peer pressure. I think it honestly uh, warns against the dangers of peer pressure, if anything. Mm. Okay, that's fair. But Just it like the Earth Spirits intended. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it doesn't warn against the dangers no. of lying. No, that was like, <laughs> the way that this whole epi- the way that this whole there episode is there is never any consequences for him lying. No, ever. The way that this whole episode is wrapped up is not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know, Tiara, you actually had a very resourceful uh, solution to the exiting the canyon uh, exiting the canyon dilemma. Did you want to mention that? Yeah, but that was before I remembered there was like a 5 million cave crawlers or candy crawlers or whatever. <laughs> I, my solution was, I was like, why don't they just go to the end of the cave and then Appa uses his freaking bison whistle and then Appa can just ferry people. Aang mm-hmm. uses his bison whistle. What did whistle. I say? He said Appa. Appa. Oh, yeah, well. He's allowed. He use it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but I forgot that there was going to be 5 million candy crawlers, so that I was mean, moot. T- t- to be fair, 
if if Appa was up to it, they didn't even have to enter into the canyon. He could have just literally <laughs> flown them Ferried all across. Ferried back like, and forth. People by, like, would have taken all day, but it took you two days to get through the canyon anyway. Mm. And you no, became... it took them one full day. Like, 24-hour cycle. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it takes them one full day to get through there. Okay, but whatever. It doesn't matter how much time it takes them, because it's way safer. <laughs> if you're going to take that much time, any amount of time at all, then why not just do it the safe way? I want. I want to see the the secret lost episode of Appa and the old sick people. Yeah. <laughs> um. Just like this is just like primo material there. It's like oh, like there's a definitely like a like enemies to lovers story there somewhere. I bet. Right. Just be like, oh and it's gosh. all on a road trip. You like <laughs> think about it. Like Appa's <laughs> flying them, and then he like gets them across the canyon in like an hour, so it was fine. And then he likes he like sets them all down. And there's, like, sick people helping the old people <laughs> off and old people helping the sick people. And they're all, like, getting along. And then, like, shoots back to them, like, fighting in the canyon. <laughs> and, like, shoots back to them. They're, like, singing Kumbaya by a fire. <laughs> Pure utopia if Appa's in charge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think somebody needs to write that fanfic. I really <laughs> I'm on it. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. The lost episode of the worst episode of Avatar. <laughs> honestly, would have been a better episode. Oh, that's uh, funny. Yeah, honestly, though, I'm not a huge fan of this episode. Me like either. the the other episodes that are like like the jet episode, mm. I don't like, but in a good way. You know, mm-hmm. it has substance, it has depth. The characters are like characters make you mad. They make you yeah. mad. They yeah. make you feel something. In this episode, it just felt like silly adults. Yeah, it just <laughs> felt like I don't know. It was like why are you even fighting dudes well like that was like the point right it's, mm. it's just i don't know it just didn't feel like the story was there it didn't feel like it moved any narratives no. forward and it didn't like... evoke emotion yeah mm-hmm. yes i agree so do we have last thoughts on this episode i feel like we've torn it to bits on how much you don't <laughs> like it have you guys heard that uh it's like a uh, it's like a common saying now it's like um it was <laughs> It was a gatekeep gaslight girl bo- girl boss. I don't know. It's just like a, a weird that? thing that's like trending recently. It's like I don't know. It's like it's like a mantra almost. I've and- heard those words separately, <laughs> but never all in one string. I have no clue, but I think there's definitely some uh, gaslight energy. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have no final thoughts beyond that though. <laughs> My final thought is lying is good if it makes people get along. I guess. I that's mean, what this episode is saying. I mean, that shouldn't be a final thought. <laughs> I don't agree with that. I'm just saying that that is what this episode is saying is all. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that there is oh. maybe a, like a deeper message to the episode. I think it more has to revolve around, you know, the, the dangers of peer pressure and the dangers of getting caught up in conflicts that have been happening before your time. I also think that it also kind of warns against maybe the dangers of at least if again if 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 Aang hadn't <laughs> lied at the end it would have kind of war- it would have made way more sense it would have warned against the dangers of like believing stories that happened well before your time and like mm. it, it's like the perfect example of the telephone game right it's mm-hmm. like the story every time the story gets told over it changes a little bit and it would have been great if that was the case but then they just destroy yeah. it all at the but end with the they, lying they thing could've... They didn't have to make him lie. No, that's what I'm saying. They could have had him (laughs) legitimately have met these people and have that have been the case. Because he did travel the world when he was young. Like, he met people in the Earth Kingdom. He met Mm Boomy and everything, right? So, like, he had friends in the Earth Kingdom. These could have, like, the writers could have made it so that this was the truth. But they didn't. I just just don't see the point, like, in them adding that, that... Oh, I was lying about the whole thing into the end. It it wasn't necessary. It would have just been like it would have been totally. It would have been more believable if he would have just that yeah. was actually the story. You know, <laughs> he had actually met these people, and they were. Just, it was just a giant misunderstanding over a game of sports. <laughs> that would make more sense. Because yeah. people get real worked up about sports. They do, <laughs> just like they get worked up about Avatar or Star Wars or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Way to plug your other show there. Wow, people just get worked up about things. People get worked up about things that they are passionate about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter what it may be, whether it be sports, whether it be politics, whether it be 
uh, Star Wars versus Star Trek. People love to like get into their tribe and be like and tell everybody why the other one is wrong. Tarps, no tarps. Yeah. <laughs> ranch, no ranch. <laughs> <laughs> See, Tim, Tim gets it. Man, I think we're like cats really, or dogs. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're really starting to decipher this piece of garbage effort episode, and like really finding the true meaning of it. I think. <laughs> I agree. I agree. What I I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just feel like we're desperately grasping at yeah, straws to try to give this say, episode actually, meaning. I was like, I feel like we're giving it more meaning than what it has right now. <laughs> just because. as the Earth spirits intended. Yeah. <laughs> And that, and that is because we are Avatar fans, and <laughs> Avatar creators can do no wrong. <laughs> they can't. Uh, they speaking of a lack of critical thinking and follow things blindly, um, I think that was actually um. <laughs> um now that I'm thinking about an, a thing that added to the cartoonishness of these characters' decisions was um, the main conflict of this current generation of these two tribes. Uh, due to the lack of critical thinking and seeing things for what they actually are, um, they're just perpetually miserable and like at each other's throats. Um, what's so what adds to the cartoonishness is that um, the way the conflict was resolved, I'm using air quotes, uh, was through their lack of critical thinking again of um, yeah, this person just this person just told me my entire life's a lie. Like, okay, cool. I don't have to fight these people now. So yeah, it was kind of yeah. It's just it's, it's wrapped up shoddily for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like yeah. even even if that story was true, the people just being like, oh, okay, we're friends oh, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, no, of totally. course. Let's go together. Dude, I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but I guess maybe it was because of like the the, the shared danger the, that like, they went crawlers, through. The yeah, crawlers, the candy crawlers. Maybe like them working why. together. I really like that. I don't normally, su- <laughs> actually, I don't suggest uh, making French friendships through very traumatic and scary situations. But <laughs> but um, in dangerous situations, like the two tribes uh, experienced, uh, um, they were actually able to, I guess, see each other's like true selves. I guess of yeah. having the instincts to be resourceful and protective and to. Like, get yeah, the job done. When they did get up to the top, they were like, wow, I never knew you could be so resourceful. Wow, I never th- mm-hmm. thought you could get your hands dirty. Mm-hmm. But then they were immediately like, oh, this thing happened a hundred years ago. Better fight you for it. <laughs> it's like, I understand why Aang stepped in and lied. But at the same time, it was like, mm. it was so close to just being resolved at that point. Like, could the creators not have expounded on that? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait a minute. Like, could yeah. they not have just expanded that and like made that the conflict resolution? Maybe, maybe the, the end could have been like, you know what? Yes, we have this huge conflict that happened a hundred years ago, but let's get past that. We're living in the present. We just helped each other out. Yeah, yeah. we both let's go to like, Bossing say together. And both mm-hmm. of our villages just got destroyed by the Fire Nation. Like, let's do that. Let's yeah. like unite under that banner instead of like this silly story. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And maybe, I I mean, again, maybe. Wow. This is, this you guys are making this way better, actually. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. This is all, this is the straight up facts. Hold on. Go on. Yeah, that would have been a way better ending. And maybe this is me reading into it way too much again. It maybe probably it, is. It, it totally is, for sure. But, like, that's like, maybe that was the whole intention behind the stupid, silly lie at the end. Is it's just like. It, it doesn't matter the story that takes place, but again, no, that doesn't happen with the. Anyways, the mm-hmm. it doesn't. Yeah. I, okay, yeah. conspiracy theory two. Uh, this was just the intern. This was the intern. Like interns took charge of this episode for the writing team <laughs> and all those cute little different art styles. It was like, yep, we're just gonna throw the interns at it. Do whatever you want. I think. I'm, just gonna, <laughs> I'm joking. You, you take control of this. I know your art style is not exactly like Avatar, but you got it. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is not consistent with our aesthetic at all. But yes, <laughs> joking, joking. Yeah. No, I just feel like this whole episode. I think. It could have been wrapped up a lot nicer, and yeah. the, the 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 way that it, it was ended was just pointless and <laughs> silly and just bad. <laughs> my my last thought here is that I actually did really appreciate the different art styles. It kind mm-hmm. of made it kind of like was like a look into their minds and like yeah. what their yeah. like kind of like mindset was. Yeah, the different art styles when Ooh. they were recounting yeah. the the legends or whatever. Yeah, it was really tribes. cool. Yeah. I really enjoyed the different art styles as much as we mock them. No, I was actually going <laughs> to I was actually going to say fair. that um, that is actually something that I really did appreciate about 
this episode. It was kind of cool the way that they did do that. That was actually my final thought as well. Mm. So. Neat. Building off of that. Now that, you, now that I think about it, the fact that the art styles were so inconsistent with how the actual reality of the world was, I think that, that kind of helped. Um, uh, what you might call... Oh, I'm trying to be deep. I don't know what I'm saying. Art style was cool, and I think the, the fact that it was a different style helped um, show that the people who were counting the memories were looking through very specific lenses that yeah. altered reality. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Very good thoughts. Yes. <laughs> So overall, I think uh, like bad episode, yeah, zero bad out episode. of ten. I th- way too harsh. This truth, this truth. One uh, out of ten. Still too harsh. The two lesson of, of this episode was telling the truth, and this is obviously our favorite episode. Ever. My name is not Tim Ocampo. And it's not Tira Penner signing off. And I'm not Cody Smith. Nice. I think. <laughs> is that what we're going with? <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going with. Stay hot, hot people. Yep, yep. If you liked this episode of the podcast, why not leave a review? Whether you're listening on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcast, whatever podcatcher you may be listening on, ratings and reviews are huge. They help us to break through those evil algorithms and it will help us to reach the most amount of glorious Avatar fans that we can possibly reach. If you'd like up-to-date information regarding this podcast, uh, follow us on Instagram. You can find us at the.last.podbender on Instagram. If you would like more information about all of the shows that Froggy Style Productions produces, including this one, follow them on social media, and you can find them at Froggy Style Productions on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For more ways in which you can support the show, visit fsproductions.ca.